The ThorSwap aggregator has just launched, bringing more than 4,800 ERC-20 Ethereum tokens to ThorSwap. This means we now have access to swap all of those ERC-20 tokens with the native assets already integrated into ThorChain, such as native Bitcoin, native Litecoin, Atom, Doge, BNB, Bitcoin Cash, and ThorChain Rune. As you've come to expect from ThorSwap and ThorChain, this is all done in a totally non-custodial way using your own self-custodied wallets, completely permissionlessly and decentralized. Just connect your own self-custodied wallets and perform the swaps. This is possible by aggregating liquidity from popular Ethereum protocols. So this is using Uniswap V2 and V3, SushiSwap, 0x, and 1inch. So by tapping into all that existing liquidity and pairing it with ThorChain assets, you're able to swap a much larger variety of assets in one convenient place, saving you time, saving you gas fees, and giving you one easy user experience. So let's walk through how to actually use this ThorSwap aggregator and perform a few swaps. We'll go through three different examples, one starting with a native asset such as real Bitcoin and ending up with an Ethereum ERC-20 token, one doing the opposite of that starting with an ERC-20 and ending up with a different asset like Bitcoin, Rune, or Doge, and also an example where we just swap from ERC-20 to ERC-20 and ThorSwap aggregator will still find you an efficient route without even using ThorChain. So first just head to app.thorswap.finance and you'll find the main swap portal and let's get started by connecting some wallets. Since we're dealing with native assets on ThorSwap, you have to connect multiple chain wallets for the actual blockchains that you'll be using. So for example, if you want to swap from Bitcoin to an ERC-20, you're going to have to connect something for the Bitcoin side and something for the Ethereum side. Same goes for any of the chains that you want to be using. So you can connect more than one wallet at a time. You don't have to connect all the chains. It's totally up to you based on the swap that you're looking to do. This is also the redesigned wallet selector, which will help you understand which wallets work for which chains. So for example, with XDeFi, it's showing me which chains I can connect. Or let's say I wanted to connect Atom, then it's going to show me Kepler, Ledger, and Keystore. So very easy to figure out what is compatible with what. For this example, I'm going to connect XDeFi and just connect this variety of chains so we have some options to work with. And we can see under wallet, we have multiple wallets connected, different chain addresses for each chain we have connected here for native assets. So for example, our Doge address, our Ethereum address, and so on. So for this first swap, let's take this Bitcoin. This is real native Bitcoin in my BC1 native Bitcoin address. And let's swap this to an ERC20 token. So for the from asset, I've already got BTC selected here, but of course we could change that. And for the to asset, this is where we're gonna select what we wanna receive. If you've been a user of ThorSwap in the past, this part is going to be a bit new because now there are a bunch of ERC-20 assets showing up on the token list. And we can even go to manage token list and decide which sources we want to pull these asset lists from. So by default, it's going to have ThorChain assets and one inch assets. But if you are more advanced and you're looking for something particular, you can also enable these broader lists. Just be sure that you're interacting with the token that you are intending to be. So we'll leave that as is and let's select an asset to swap to. I'm going to search for an ERC-20 asset curve, and I can see this is the regular curve right here, and I can check the address on Etherscan. So I'm going to select this. I could also star it if I would like to, and let's select how much to swap. I'm going to swap 0 0.025 Bitcoin and receive curve. It will estimate how much I'm going to be receiving. And here, this is my connected Ethereum address where I'll be receiving the curve. Of course, again, this is all native assets, so you have to have a real Ethereum address connected. You can even unlock this and just manually input an address here if you would like to. Just be careful, never do this with a centralized exchange address, only your own self-custodied wallet. Here you'll see the breakdown of gas fees, and these depend on the blockchains you're using. So in this case, we're paying fees to send our Bitcoin in, and we're also paying Ethereum gas fees to have this curve sent back out to us. And then here you'll see the routes that your swap is taking through the aggregator. So the ThorSwap aggregator is automatically figuring out what is the most efficient route for you and making that the default. So the one where you will get the most output tokens, but you'll see that there are other options. It will show you everything available. So if for some reason you wanted to take a different route, then you can very easily just switch between these, but by default, it'll give you the most efficient one. So let's go ahead and swap this Bitcoin for some curve. We'll see the breakdown here and confirm the transaction which will then be pushed to our wallet where we will need to sign it. 
So because I'm using XDeFi wallet, my XDeFi popped up and this is a signature to send the Bitcoin in. So I'll sign that and get this swap started. And then you'll see it pending right here and you can track it as well. I did mention paying the gas fees on both sides. However, this is all done on the back end. So you really only need the inbound asset gas. So for example, to do this swap that I just did, I don't need anything in my wallet other than Bitcoin. When we do the swap the other way around, let's say we were swapping curve to Bitcoin, then I would need some Ethereum for gas to have that curve sent in as the first step. But in that case, I wouldn't need any Bitcoin. You also do not need any ThorChain Rune or any ThorSwap Thor tokens to use this. So I'm just waiting for that swap to go through because we're using native assets. The timing does depend on the chains we're using. So in this case, Bitcoin is a very slow blockchain. So I'm gonna give this some time and just wait for this to show that it went through. But if you see this spinning, everything is working properly. You're just waiting on that slow chain. And again, this is a link to track the inbound transaction. So in this case, you would be tracking the Bitcoin in, which can take some time. And once ThorChain witnesses that, then the rest of the swap will be completed. All right, and after some time waiting for that Bitcoin send in, we can see the swap is complete and our curve has been received. We can look at our wallet and under Ethereum, we see our ERC20s including that curve. So that's our first cross-chain swap using the aggregator. We went from native Bitcoin, we went from native Bitcoin through ThorChain and SushiSwap to our ERC20 curve. So now let's do an ERC20 to another ERC20 swap. So let's just reverse this and we'll swap from our curve to another ERC20. Let's do ApeCoin. So search for Ape and it shows up here. So we've got our curve going to APE, ERC20 to ERC20. And you can always just expand this to see all of the associated fees. And then here you'll see the routes. So in this case, we're not doing a cross-chain swap. This is just within Ethereum. So the ThorSwap aggregator is being an aggregator of aggregators and showing us what the best route is. And right now that is through the one inch aggregator but we'll also see the other options for possible routes uh, using ThorSwap here. But in this case, one inch is the winner. So we'll go ahead and do this swap through one inch. So let's go ahead with the swap. We do have to approve the contract first when dealing with ERC20s. So let's first approve this and we'll sign this transaction to approve that contract. So now that that's approved, this has switched from approved to swap and we can go ahead and sign the transaction to do our swap. So we'll see a summary breakdown before we do it. ERC20 curve to ERC20 ape, and we'll see fees and slippage associated and how much the minimum we will receive is. So let's confirm this and then sign in our wallet, confirm. And then we'll see the swap pending here as well as an ether scan link. And that one took just a minute because it's just within Ethereum. And now we can see that our ape should be in our wallet. Just give that a refresh. And there's our ape that we just swapped to using the ThorSwap aggregator routing just through one inch. So now let's do a third example where we do the entire thing in reverse. Let's start with that ape ERC20 and swap using the aggregator and back through ThorChain to get a different native asset. So that could be BNB, Bitcoin, Rune, and so on. So let's flip these around swap from ape and let's select an asset that we want to receive in this case let's look for a native asset this process would be the same for any of these it's just a matter of having an appropriate wallet connected so having a bnb supported wallet or having a thorchain wallet or a btc wallet so let's do something other than btc just to show another example let's do rune on the thorchain blockchain so another cross-chain swap Again, we'll see the breakdown of fees. You just have to expand that view to see that, and you'll also see the routes. So in this case, it's using 0x for the ERC20 to USDC on ETH, and then swapping that to Rune through ThorChain. You can see the other options for routes as well that would end up with a little bit less Rune because this step is not as efficient as the winning step right here. So we'll use the default step, and let's approve this swap. Again, anytime you're doing an ERC20 swap on the first time, you'll have to approve the contract and then you'll have to complete the swap. So we'll sign this approval and that's pending up here. That's approved, so let's continue with this swap. Always check the summary and then confirm and sign to swap from Ape to Rune. 
This step is for sending the ape in. So there is ETH required for gas to send that ERC20. And that swap is now pending up here. And as soon as that goes through, we would see the rune show up at our native Thorchain rune address right here. And then we've completed the round trip and done multiple cross-chain swaps using the ThorSwap aggregator. So that's how you can use the new and improved ThorSwap with aggregation. So going to and from 4,800 plus ERC-20s to and from all the ThorChain native assets and back and forth, as well as even finding the best routes between ERC-20s by being an aggregator of aggregators. Definitely keep an eye out for updates to the aggregator with new pool integrations, new chains. This is going to continue to expand more and more over time with the goal really being to be able to swap any token to any token. And as always, if you ever need additional help, just check out the support button right here, jump into the official ThorSwap Discord, and you can open a private support ticket one-on-one, 24-7 -on -one, at any time, and you'll always get help. So that's the ThorSwap aggregator, and happy swapping.